Okay, and welcome to Unit 4 of OnlinePHPClass.com. And in this unit, we're going to talk about control structures and conditionals. So why control structures and conditionals? Well, programs are told what to do by the programmer. And in an effort to control the flow of the program, in other words, what to do and when and how to do it, control structures and conditionals are needed. Some of you may know of control structures and conditionals as loops or if statements. So let's talk about loops, uh, control structures loops. So loops are used to get a certain action to repeat until a desired end state or exit condition is met. The if statement is used to check for conditions to determine how to proceed. And loops have embedded if statements, which we'll see coming up. So first loop we'll talk about is the while loop. The while loop is the simplest type of loop in PHP and it has a couple of different formats. The first one is you can just use while and then in parentheses put the expression followed by statement. And of course uh, you can put parentheses or braces rather around blocks of statements to create um, an entire while loop statement. Basically, as we talked about before, it's important to know in PHP what constitutes a statement. So you can put braces around statements inside the while loop to essentially uh, open and close the while loop. You also have an alternative format where you can do while. Um, I'm pretty sure that should be a lowercase w there, so forgive me on that. Uh, you can do while expression colon statement, 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 and then end while semicolon. You could do it that way as well. Here's an example from php.net. Example 1 uses while loop, and as we see, we do use braces around it in this particular case. So it, it starts uh, a counter of you know, $i equals 1, does while $i is less than or equal to 10, echo $i++. Plus plus. So in PHP, there is a plus plus version. You could e in other words, you could equal or you could echo dollar i equals dollar i plus one. Um, but basically, in PHP, you have a plus plus version where you can do dollar i plus plus or plus plus dollar i. The key here is like what the comment says: the printed value would be dollar i before the increment, i.e., post increment. Okay, so what you're going to get. Um, is basically you're gonna the printed value would be dollar i before the increment. So what you'll see um, for the counts is we can actually we can do this here. I'll show it to you. All right, let me bring up the def PHP here. And let's get rid of all of this from last unit. Let's say we have dollar i equals one while dollar i is less than ten less than or equal to ten. Echo dollar i plus plus. And what you get is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. You get the value before the actual increment. Okay. That's called a post increment, meaning you're going to increment after you echo the value. Okay. If you put the plus plus i, you'll be incrementing before. So if we did plus plus you actually get two through two through ten should should be two through ten or two through eleven sorry and the reason why it's two through eleven is because you're gonna so it says when when dollar i equals ten it'll say is dollar i less than or equal to ten yes okay echo plus plus dollar i which means echo you know dollar i plus one first so make it eleven and then print it out. Whereas the other one says print it out and then make it 11. Okay. So the, the second example is the exact same thing. 
um, except two different things. One, it uses the second variation of while, and it does the incrementing outside of the echo. Okay. Next, we have the do while loop. The do while loop is very similar to while loops, except the truth expression is checked at the end of each expression, um, except at the beginning. Okay, so basically there's one syntax you can set dollar i equals zero, you can do something like do echo dollar i, and then at the end while dollar i is greater than zero. Okay, so basically dollar i is not greater than zero initially, um, but it should be uh, incremented. I'm actually rather surprised there's no increment in here. That doesn't seem to to work. Let's do something like set dollar i equal to zero. Do we'll do echo dollar i plus plus while. So in this particular case, you're going to echo dollar i plus plus, and while dollar i is less than ten, okay. So you get zero through nine. Now if I set this to ten, we do get ten, and the reason why we get ten, even though this says while dollar i is less than ten, is because the do statement portion of the do while loop is executed first. Okay? That's different than a while i less than 10. If we just did while i less than 10, nothing would echo because i equals 10. Okay? It's not less than 10, it is 10. In a do while loop you're executing the do block, then you're checking the while. Okay? The for loop uses three expressions as in this example. For expression 1, semicolon, expression 2, semicolon, expression 3, and then followed by statements. Alternatively, you could do for expression 1, semicolon, expression 2, semicolon, expression 3, statement, 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 and for semicolon. Of course, you can put braces around statements just like we saw in the while and do while loops. Okay, and what these expressions mean is expression 1 is evaluated once unconditionally at the beginning of the loop usually initializing an iterator. Expression 2 is evaluated at the beginning of each iteration if expression 2 is true the nested items are then executed. If it's false the loop exits. Expression 3 is evaluated at the end of each iteration. So basically any of the expressions can be empty or comma separated. If expression 2 is comma separated, the result is taken from the last item in the list. Expression 2 empty means the loop runs indefinitely, and that's helpful when you want to use break statements, which we'll cover later. Note, instead of having a function call in expression 2, use an assignment statement with a function call so that the function doesn't have to be evaluated with each iteration. This is just a, a tip I'm, I'm tossing out there for you from a performance perspective. Rather than doing something like for $i equals 0, do while dollar i is less than my SQL numbers uh, qr uh, iterate dollar i use dollar i equals zero do while i is less than dollar nr equals my SQL numbers qr iterate dollar i this basically will cover when we get to my SQL but basically the my SQL numbers function counts a number of rows in a result for the qr I abbreviated query result which is what you get when you run a MySQL underscore query and uh, in our I'm using for number of rows. So what happens is the first example, it, PHP would iterate through the loop and it would be evaluating MySQL number rows QR every single time. Every single time you iterate through the loop. It's say it's counting the number of rows in the query, in the query result every single time. The second one, it, the first time it runs, it says, give me the number of rows in the query. I'll set that to value of dollar $nr. Okay? The second time I come through the, the for loop, I'm just going to do while dollar i is less than dollar nr, because nr is already set. And it saves performance 
by a factor of the total number of times that you're iterating through the loop. So given this for loop, the way I personally write this for loop is saying, for the way that I've written it here, for i equal to 0, do while i is less than 10, i plus plus, or iterate i. Okay, i equals i plus 1, same kind of thing. What you realize is expression 2 can be treated like a do while loop. Okay, Again, for i equals 0, do while i is less than 10, i plus plus. Okay, The middle part, expression 2, is can be treated like a do while loop. Here's the for loop from php.net. Okay. A couple of different examples. The break basically says at that point when that condition is met, come out of the loop. Okay? Because if you notice in the second example, expression two is missing, which means the loop would run indefinitely. So you can use the uh, the break statement there. Example three, all three conditions are uh, in def are not provided. Okay, so there's nothing to do initially, there's nothing to do uh, from a do while check, which means it'll run indefinitely, and there's nothing to do after, which means you also have to iterate inside the loop. You have to have a break, because you have to have a way to come out, okay, and you have to have an iterator, which you have the dollar $i++ at the bottom, okay? For the most part, you'll probably be dealing with example one style. Example four style is to show you how you can have a list of statements for the different expressions. There's statement, comma, statement, comma, statement, semicolon for each expression 1, expression 2, expression 3. So you can do multiple things at the beginning of the loop, multiple things at the end of the loop, at the end of each iteration. Okay? And you can also do multiple things in the middle from do while perspective, but remember expression 2 evaluates to the last item if you're going to use multiple statements in expression 2. Alright, next we move on to my favorite loop in PHP, and that is the for each loop. The for each loop is used to iterate over arrays easily. Okay, there are two syntaxes available. You have for each array expression as value, followed by statement. You also have for each array expression as key, pointing to value, followed by statements. So basically you have the option of getting the values of the array, so you can iterate over the values. You can also iterate over the array elements where you have both the key and the value, uh, where you have access to both the key and the value. So this is extremely helpful. You don't have to use all those get values, get keys, um, th the functions that, that get the values and keys. You don't have to use all of them and then write a for loop over them. I mean, you can, but I mean, that's essentially what the for each loop does. So the for each loop is very, very helpful. So remember that reset, the function reset, resets the internal array pointer to the array's first element, okay? You don't need to reset before a for each because the internal array pointer is reset with the for each, okay? Basically, that basically means that when you do a for each, no matter what the internal pointer is that PHP uses for the array, wherever it's pointing to, whatever element it's pointing to, it is reset. So when you iterate using a for each loop, you are getting the array from the very, very first element. Okay. You should, however, do a reset after using a reference to the array in PHP 5. So if you are passing by reference or using some sort of array reference, um, you should do a reset so that you reset the pointer back to the first element. Alright, so here's an example from php.net. Uh, dollar $r equals array 1, 2, 3, 4 for each array as value by reference, value equals value times 2. Okay. What this actually is doing, since you are using value by reference, that's what the ampersand means, you're actually changing, if you do value equals value times 2, you're literally changing the values in the array. Okay? So what it says, the comment says array is now array 2468. Okay? You can then unset value, okay, which breaks the reference, okay, with the last element. Because if you don't unset a reference like that, you have a tendency, it'll, the, the, the value um, 
will actually have a reference still to the last element. So in other words, if you're doing array 1, 2, 3, 4 by reference, value will hold a reference to 4, and then once value equals value times 2 runs, it'll hold a reference to that 8 in the last element. So array index 3, okay, 0, 1, 2, 3. It'll hold a reference to array index 3 unless you unset it. Okay, so that clears the reference. So if you're wondering how you can double an array, like multiply every element by something, or how to make changes to every element in an array, you can do a for each loop. You can also, if you're just interested in the values, obviously you don't need to do by reference. You can literally then use the 1, 2, 3, and 4. If you just wanted to print out the values times 2, you could just do uh, for each dollar $r as dollar value with no ampersand, and then echo dollar value times 2. Okay. Now the if statement. We're going to get into um, the if statement. The if statement is very important because it allows for conditional execution of code fragments. One way to use the if statement is if expression followed by statements. Okay. You don't need braces so if you're just running one individual statement uh, otherwise put the braces okay expression is evaluated to its boolean value and if expression evaluates to true the statement is executed if expression evaluates to false the statement is ignored here's an example if dollar a is greater than dollar b echo a is bigger than b okay you can have more than one statement executed by grouping with braces as i mentioned Okay, if dollar a is greater than b, echo, a is bigger than b, and then it has setting b equal to a. Okay, which if a is greater than b, setting b equal to a would mean that a is no longer greater than b because they're equal. Okay, so the first example, as you see, does not use braces and it uses one particular statement because the entire if echo is one PHP statement. When you do your if containing multiple statements within it, you have to um, put the braces around it. Okay, so that's basically how that works. Now, comparing with strings using greater than and less than, that's an interesting exercise. Uh, we may talk about it briefly. I'm not sure, but basically, you can post it in the form if you have any questions about it, and we can address it there. The if statement continuing. So you can nest if statements indefinitely. Okay, so you can have dollar $x equals 17. If dollar $x is less than 20, do this. If dollar $x is greater than 10, do this. If dollar $x is greater than 15, do this. Echo x is between 15 and 20. Okay. So you can see how that works. And you don't need braces because each subsequent line is actually another statement that requires a subsequent line. So unless you were having multiple statements underneath where the echo is you wouldn't need braces and even then you would only need braces underneath the if statement I find that under the last if statement okay I find that it's helpful to include braces because if you have to go back uh, it's much easier to already have the braces in place um, than it is to mess with the formatting in addition it's easier to read okay your style of if you want to put the open brace on the, on the line with the if statement and the closed brace on its own line or if you want to put this open brace and its closed brace both on its own line it's up to you okay using else else if and else if with the space they are different um, so basically you have uh, else if is the same as else if except else if must be used when using the alternative syntax okay so let me repeat that else if without the space is the same as else if with the space except else if without the space must be used when using the alternative syntax okay so here's an example where if a is greater than b echo a is bigger than b else if without the space a is equal to b okay then echo a is equal to b else echo a is smaller than b okay that's else if without the space if we're going to use else if okay never mind we're going to talk about switch next so basically go back into if um, I was just looking at this because 
it almost seems like else if with the space must be the one that has to be used with the alternative syntax. So if I do something, if I do, if dollar i is less than twelve. Uh, else if I want to do it right first okay echo else it sorry dollar i is equal to 10 oh it's not actually going to work because the first one's going to all right so that should echo well, that'll just echo 10 equals is equal to 10, because I didn't do the literal. Okay, uh, I should should really have this in single quotes. All right, now if I change this to space, first of all, let's make sure this works, and it'll print dollar i. If I put a space here, that should not work. It is going to. Oh. Oh my gosh! See, I don't use the alternative syntax. I don't think you need it. That's why it, it, uh, it, it what I wrote on the slide didn't didn't seem to make sense initially. What this is saying, what this is saying is you can use else if without the space or else if with the space. However, if you're going to use the alternative syntax, you must use else if without the space. In other words, the else if with the space does not work with the alternative syntax. That's what uh, this is talking about here. Uh, forgive me for that. I, I don't use the alternative syntax. I'm including it for completeness. Um, I, it, to me, it's just more confusing. Like you have these little one-off rules like this. You can use else if without the space or with the space uh, in a traditional if style uh, uh, statement. So just just stick with that, and you'll be okay. All right. Now we'll move on to the switch statement. These two, as it says, are functionally equivalent. Okay, you have if dollar i equals zero, echo i equals zero. Else if dollar i equals one, L, echo dollar i or echo i equals one. Else if dollar i equals two, echo i equals two. Or switch dollar i, where you use case statements. Case zero, echo i equals two, break. Case one, echo i equals one, break. Case two, echo i equals two, break. The breaks are required because if you don't, what it'll do is it'll actually do each case statement from the first one it matches down to break. Okay, so if you took out the break in case zero, you would get i equals zero, i equals one. Okay, in fact, we can. All right, so case dollar i. Oh, I'm sorry, switch dollar i. I got to do. That's why I was like, didn't make any sense. All right, switch dollar i. Case ten. Now I'll put a break. And you'll get i equals 10. Okay. If I take this break out, you'll get i equals 10, i equals 20. Okay. Because it'll run down to the break from the first case it matches. Okay. All right. You can use strings with the switch statement. So you can do case, apple, bar, cake. Okay, and you can, you don't have to have numbers. Uh, some languages you have to. In PHP, you can have strings. You can mix strings with numbers in case statements. Okay, just make sure you quote the strings. Okay, pretty standard. Um, it's not a keyword. It's got to be a string. It's got to be quoted. All right. 
if you leave a break oh here's my comment on leaving the breakout if you leave a breakout statements in subsequent case statements will execute from php.net here if dollar i is equal to zero php would execute all the echo statements if dollar i is equal to one php would execute the last two you'd be getting the expected behavior i equals two would be displayed only if dollar i equals two okay that should make sense to you now that i gave you that mini demo all right so here's how continue and break work continue is used when looping structures to skip the rest of the current loop iteration and continue execution at the condition evaluation and then the beginning of the next iteration okay so you're continuing execution at the condition evaluation and then the beginning of the next iteration you're literally continuing in your loop you're just going to the next iteration um, after your evaluation of your condition though okay Continue accepts an, optim an optional numeric argument which tells it how many levels of enclosing loops it should skip to the end of. That's important because if you are nesting loops, you need to know at what loop do you want to jump to. Okay. Break ends execution of the current for for each while or do while or switch structure. Break accepts an optional numeric argument which tells it how many nested enclosing structures are to be broken out of. Same kind of thing. How many if you're nesting loops? how many loops you want to break out of. Always remember to semicolon with continue. Okay, very important. Here's a continue example. By saying continue three, you're executing, you're, you're continuing from, not from the first while loop. So you have this while loop here, while one. You also have this while loop here, and you have this while loop here. Continue three will continue up to the top uh, while loop. Here's a break example. This shows you break two, okay, which exits the switch and the while loop because the break one would just exit the switch, and the break two would exit the while loop. So here's the break one exiting only the switch, okay, which is the same thing as this. Alright, here is alternative syntax for control structures. PHP.net resource, should you be interested. Of course, it's all one line. Um, and there is a dash between control structure between control and structures. Okay. Alright, so PHP 5.3.0 plus has a go to. You can do go to structure like this. Uh, let's check what is our We're using 5.3.1, so we have the go-to, okay? All right, demo time. We're going to set the name vari set name variable to a name and print hello name only if it is your first name. Okay, so let's do that. Set a name variable equal to, I'm just going to use onlinephpclass.com. If name equals equals online php class dot com oops print or echo hello name. Okay. We see it prints. If I change online php class dot com to Greg it does not. Create an array of names and say hello to each of the names. Okay, so we actually did that before, but this time names equal array. Greg, Jen, Cindy, uh, Dan, John. and say hello to each of the names, okay? What kind of loop do you think we're going to use? Personally, I like the for each. So for each array as and 
I'll put key value just for the heck of it here. Okay. Echo, hello, value. Uh, and I'm also going to put a break. There you go. Easy. Print hello name ten times using four and an iterator. Okay, well, let's do this. We already have the for each. I'm just going to wrap this in a for loop. Try equals zero. Do while i is less than ten. Plus. What do you think? Do we need the braces? Nope, because for each carries with it one extra line. And we're going to echo. Yeah. Uh, we don't need them. What I'm going to do though is I'm going to I'm going to use them because I want to actually echo time. actual instance. And then I'll do it ten, ten times. Ah, syntax error. Alright. Expecting comma or semicolon on line six. Oh. Okay, so the error was on line 6 it mentioned, but the problem is I forgot the semicolon on line 5, because the parser actually was saying, well, you're missing a semicolon here. Um, so sometimes when you get a parser, you want to check the line before. All right. Zero. Uh, I do zero. I really should do. Here. Let's do number. Oh, I, did I mention... So you can also use a hash as a comment. I think you can. Maybe you can't. Hold on a second. Sometimes I get my languages confused too. Let's see what happens. Well, that's going to error. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that works. All right. So you can use a hash as a comment too. Now, if I want to do dollar i plus one, what do you think that's going to print? It's actually going to print. 0 plus 1, 1 plus 1. <laughs> so what do you think you need to do? You need to put... Well, you can't really put parentheses. But you can put... And if you can put braces, though. No, nope, I lied. The reason why... doing that. I'm just going to break it out. Okay, some issue with... Oh, it's because the variable isn't that. Yeah, this is what I want. Yep. So is what I'm talking about watching me do this live. Switch to parentheses. There you go. Switch to parentheses, and I took it out. Do I need to have it outside of the the echo statement? No. So I could have used parentheses, but the trick is to put the parentheses from the left side of the dollar sign. So you're grouping the addition. Nope, that doesn't work. Ha! <laughs> And the reason why is because they're getting evaluated as part of the string. So you literally have to, you do have to break them out. Okay. Well, that's fine as long as it works. What do I do now? Oh, the hash mark has to stay inside. <laughs> All right. All right, so number one, number two, number three, four... Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Print hello name ten times using while and an iterator. All right. So how do we change this to while? Now 
that'll go on indefinitely unless inside your while loop you put a i plus plus semicolon. Okay. Same thing. All right, and that is the demo. The exercises do each of the demos. Here they are for you. And post your questions, comments, concerns, observations, uh, feedback, and anything else that you'd like to share, learnings, experiences, uh, anything you want to tell me, uh, post that into the forum. Feel free to do the exercises. In fact, do them, please, for your own benefit. And I'll see you in the next unit.